Our, our goal here today is just to share with you uh, a little bit about what's going on with Big Yield. The first thing we're going to talk about is the products and some of the ways that we can either save you money, make you money, save you time. This is an organic product. Um, it's a liquid chicken litter. Uh, it's got a biological and a sweetener in it already. We're seeing really good uh, returns on this also. So what do we see? When we apply the seed treatment, well, we see the higher concentration of the nutrients in roots and shoots. And you might be asking, how does this helping me in the field? Okay, when the plant or the seedling is too long in the ground, what is going to happen? It's going to be attacked by the pathogens. Some of you guys that are in the non-GMO industry uh, or looking at the transitional, what I can do is give you access to wholesale ag chem products. I know we're at an organic conference, but there's a lot of guys that are still doing non-GMO. We're a niche finance company, and what I mean by niche is we are problem solvers, is how I would best describe it. Uh, there's no hiding that uh, <coughs> times are challenging. I don't know that we're doing anything different than the way things used to be done. Uh, we we base our loans off the crop itself, the crop insurance, and government payments. That's our three sources of collateral. Uh, best described as an asset-based lender. Our policy is three days. Now, does that mean we're going to fund the loan in three days? No. But at least you know where you're headed in three days. Some of the services here at AgTech that we offer, um, and we have some crop and soling services, but also we do soil sampling. Um, and he'll hit on some of the data over the top that we can provide. I mean, the, the, the buzzword for the last 10, 15 years has been precision agriculture. Precision agriculture is neat, whether it's drones, whether it's satellites, whether it's uh, fixed wing airplanes like what we offer, imaging, whatever the case might be. The one thing where I really stress on precision agriculture is turning it from precision agriculture into decision agriculture. What we do is we provide the NDVI, the natural color, the infrared, and the thermal. The reason we provide the thermal, we're, we're one of the few companies that offers all of those images every time we fly over your field. We want this imagery for you to be management because we want you guys to be more efficient. We want the consultants to be more efficient. This one is a thermal image of that same, of that same alfalfa field that I was just showing you. And you can see the, the light blue and the white is really good, but then you can see the same pockets where those aphids that's how powerful that thermal, uh, thermal is. When you look at the name of organics in uh, Missouri's history, uh, you will uh, by no means, uh, there's a legacy here with Sue that started this thing so many years ago and has been uh, such a positive force in the movement of the organic. And it's kind of like uh, the old saying, uh, Sue was uh, organic when organic wasn't cool. Our, our buyers say, how do we know that what you say you're doing is really what's being done? Why BIPs? Because there's consumer demand. Our consumers are asking for it. It is a third party verification system. You must have somebody there verifying that what you say is true is true, that, uh, that you won't have marketing without it. CRISPR, a new gene editing technique, right? This is not the traditional, what you think of as GMO, right? GMO has traditionally stood for the introduction of a new gene uh, from a different species, a foreign piece of DNA. This technique involves editing the existing genome, turning a gene on, turning a gene off. Is this going to be called GMO? We do know, and Miss Sue is absolutely right, it's not going to be called organic. Not going to happen. The Organic Standards Board said this is not organic, but it may go out because there's still a lot of issues surrounding the labeling of it as a GMO. Right now, there are materials that are sold and commercialized, where this technique has been used. It's not being labeled as GMO. Not everybody agrees with that. It's an issue. There's, a, there's actually a truck shortage. And we operate in a, again, 120 mile radius for deliveries, but we can actually reach, you know, I'm not sure what the mileage would be, but we can reach farther to get uh, loads of, of uh, products. So we can do a, a much better job of just making sure that we, you know, we have product stocked. 
trucks are an issue these days, and so we we all need to really be uh, sensitive to that. And I think for the long term, that's that'll probably be an issue. It's hard finding drivers, and demand is higher, and uh, that there's just a whole different uh, whole kind of. Uh, uh, some issues going on in the trucking industry that we've worked hard to protect ourselves by running our own trucks. And some of our focuses are, are like trying to keep costs as low as possible and when we do that we can <coughs> deliver products to customers at uh, as much value as, as we possibly can. Again where we try to focus is on return on investment. If I'm going to spend any more money today when things are as tight as they are they better be a heck of a good investment or I'm not going to do it. Just we've had really good success uh, with uh, not only row crops, uh, the soybean, wheat, corn, uh, but we have uh, affected the strawberry industry, the citrus industry. In Florida, it seems, seems odd, but they get seven harvests a year. And after using the Big Sweet Yield product, which again, approved for organic use, uh, it, uh, they have been able to get an eighth harvest, like you said. And that's, I mean, that's a, that's a huge deal for these guys. And you